Hi, my name is Noel Davis with World Composting, and today we're going to do an update on our African Nightcrawler bin. So we're going to look at two different bins today. The first one is the original bin that I put the African Nightcrawlers in, and they moved around. They consumed all the cardboard within like a few months, and then what happened is I moved some to a hamster bin or a hamster bedding bin uh, that has that in it. And then the other ones, I waited a little bit longer, a few more weeks, and then I took out all the large ones and added them to another system. And we're going to check both these systems. Now, I'm not going to take any worms out this time, although I was thinking about it, but we're just going to see how this system is doing. So this one had like zero large worms in it the last we looked at it. So I had taken them all out and moved them to the bin that we're going to look at after this bin. So Let's take a look and see how this is doing and see how this experiment's going. My question is, is how many large worms are in here and how are they doing? Uh, I don't know how the bin is doing at all. I have not checked on it in, you know, as I said, 30 days. So it's been an exact month and let's go take a look. All right, so here's our first system we're going to look at. This is the original African Nightcrawler system. We just have our bubble wrap on top here. We're just going to remove that off here. Take a look underneath. Not much on there, it looks like. Although, I don't know, um, no, it looks like nothing on here as far as I could tell that's important. So we're going to move this off to the side, just a few castings. This looks very worked through. Let's just see if there's, oh, we're finding some large worms in here already. I saw them, they slipped away right away. I see a spider coming out the side as well. Actually, let me move this down just a little bit there. I saw one. I'm not sure if there's going to be that many large worms in here because... There we go. There he is. So there's one. As you can see right there. Not very lively. But it did slip away immediately as soon as I dug down in here. Not much food left in here. On this side especially. As you can see. It's very dry too. It's almost as ready. I mean this looks like it could be sorted very, very easily. There's another one right here. So... Some of the big worms are in here. I don't know if they migrated over. I do have all my African Nightcrawler bins sort of next to each other, but now here's the section I'm really curious about. This is all cardboard that was over here, and it was kind of eaten through a little bit, but not much. Here's the sponge that I had thrown in here towards the uh, the end of the experiment to see if they would eat this. Normally these sponges take a while to break down, which is fine, but we're just trying to see what's going on in here. Definitely need some water. It's way too dry, especially in this corner over here, but we're not really in this corner at all, surprisingly eating this cart rush. Hold on, there's one down there. So here's one. So not many large worms in here. And the ones that are in here, I don't know if they were stuck in here last time or if they migrated over, but they're not very lively um, compared to what they were before or in my uh, the other systems. I have. There, we got some more in here too, actually. A few more. A little bit more lively over here. So found a good amount in here, as you can see. So, there are, there are some in here, but what we're going to do is we're just sort of going to mix this up, I think, a little bit. Actually, one thing I did forget to show you guys is that I, I did, uh, these worms do prefer, prefer a warmer temperature here, just so you can see here. As you can see, this is uh, in the 70s, so it's not too hot or too cold, it's not in the 60s. I did find a way to, to kind of keep it a little warmer in the basement especially as I, as I close the vents to keep the air, air conditioning out of here. So with, as there's not many in this section over here, what we're going to do is we're going to move this over. We're going to add some food in here. I do feel that these, these worms might need some food, and I think we will add some water. But first off, let's grab some food. We're not going to add a whole lot to this system. We're just going to add a little bit, but we are going to add some here, just something for them to kind of chow down on. So we're going to add in some mango peels here. And it's not... A whole lot compared to what I've added to bins in the past, but hopefully enough to kind of get them interested maybe in uh, moving around a little bit more and get some more microbial activity going here. So we're going to bury those in here really, really well. We'll put that sponge over here as well. Get that out too. Kind of move some of this material over. Kind of cover this up a little bit. I am going to put a date on here. I'll just put another date over here. I'm going to leave move this up so you can see. I'm going to leave this 9-12 date since I'm not taking any worms out. I didn't see a whole lot in here, although let's just, I don't really dig that much over here. Let's just see here. There's some that are just kind of sporadic in here. You can definitely tell these are the African Nightcrawlers. 
Now, I did find out from somebody that they said that these are not scared of um, light, like uh, reds are and Europeans, which I guess Europeans are. We've still got some more paper in here, but they've really turned a lot of this into castings. It's just amazing to me how well they, they've they turned cardboard into castings, which is great since uh, a lot of these, uh, a lot of my yard does need carbon. It doesn't just need the, the nutrients from uh, from the, the castings, but it also does need that carbon as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some water to this though, and I've got uh, some water over here in a bucket that has my BTI in it, which means that it's just going to it's got some of that mixture. So we're just going to make sure we're going to just add. A little sprinkling of this over the top. Let me move this out of the way. A little bit over here as well. So as I said, this is just a little bit too dry, I think. Just add a little bit more. And I had been keeping this fairly wet, but uh, it does. Th these things can dry out over time. All right, we're going to put that back. And we're going to cover this up. And let's grab bin number two that we added all these large worms to and see how that's doing. So we'll be right back in a second. All right, here's bin number two. Just so you can see again, temperature wise, pretty warm in the 70s all throughout the system. If we take this top off, we'll see the same thing, I'm sure. So I see a fruit fly on there too, or a couple of them. So we're in the 70s. I am going to replace this. This, this sheet is too small. I think I'm going to replace one, this with the one that's a little bigger that I already have pre-cut. But let's just take a look in here. And already I can tell this is pretty dry, it looks like. So I do worry about that. It seems, it seems like they're not moving through the material as well. Although there are, it is some moisture down here. I just saw a worm. It disappeared on me. It's going down towards the bottom. Whoop! it slipped away already. There we go. There's our wor first word that we're going to find in here. Looks pretty healthy to me. The fact that it ran away was, is a good sign to me, I feel. This, this material over here that was very, very dry. Um, corner here, very dry, way too dry. And I think this dried out because this was, uh, there was, it wasn't covering enough with that plastic. So I think that's a problem with that uh, piece of plastic. It was just not quite big enough. Now, I added a lot of large worms in here. I am not seeing them. I mean, like, they'd probably be all in the center section, I would think. So we've got that one. And I'm wondering if they all moved over to the bin next door, which was the hamster bedding bin, which they can do if that's a better system for them to be in. And there was a whole ton of worms in that system the last I checked. So I think that they have uh, removed themselves from this bin uh, because the system was just not set up for them enough or, or nearly well enough prepared. So it does have some of the, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to add any more worms to it at this point. We'll, we'll maybe continue to check on this, but what I am going to do is I'm going to add some water to this system, which is definitely too dry. I'm not going to add any food though, which I, I did for the, uh, the other system because there's not enough worms in there really. And there's plenty of food with this cardboard. We're going to add some of their water with BTI mix in here. And we can get the water sort of pretty high. It's going to soak up into this cardboard. So we can add quite a bit in there. Another fruit fly coming out there too. Hopefully this isn't where my, some of my fruit flies are surviving, but and there's no food in here. So unless you count the grit. So let's just get one more scoop in here. We're going to add quite a bit of water. If it floods at the bottom a little bit, that's okay. It's going to slowly work its way up through the sides and slowly soak into everything that's in here. So I'm not too worried about that. So let's just kind of dig down again into here and just, just to see how deep this is, though, the water in here. Yeah, it's starting to kind of pool a little bit in the bottom. You can see over there, that's fine. It's going to soak up into this, into this paper. So if you can see a little bit better, actually, let me just dig down to the center section here. That's going to be the easiest place for you to see. You can see that there's water water in the bottom here. It's actually sitting water stand, or standing water. And you can see it move as I move some of the stuff around as I move it. That's going to soak up into the paper. It's going to get it all nice and moist. And hopefully that'll help these worms. As, and hopefully they'll migrate back here from the other bins. Um, I know that for the hamster bedding bin, I do use a different glove. 
and I'm a little bit more careful, but worms going back and forth between the systems doesn't really bother me all that much. And the reason why I say that is because even if they go back and forth, it's only castings that should be deposited in the system. And those castings should be fine. It's just in case there's any unprocessed foods or anything like that, I don't want those going into the system. So we're not gonna be taking anything out of here right now. Just killing this one fruit fly right there. Um, but overall, this, this, this didn't work as well as I hoped, but we'll see. And then we'll continue to, to process this and try to breed up this population of African night crawlers. But luckily we're keeping these warm enough in the 70s so that way they're not gonna die off because if you get into the 60s, they can die. And hopefully we'll see, these, see them return to the system as we, uh, as we slowly move things around. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. And if you have any comments or, or or suggestions, please let me know. These I'm very new to African night crawlers, and I did some research on them, but they're very different. It feels than my other worms that I've had with the uh, the European and the uh, Reds. So, please, if you have if you have suggestions, just let me know in the comments.